All right, so this is where we left off, okay? Where uh, we completed our adjustments, okay? And uh, so we completed our adjustments. So now we need to work on completing our adjusted trial balance, okay? So like we've done previously, all you really need is just your ledger and your financial statements, okay? And what we're gonna do here is, once again, we're gonna make a copy of the, of the um, unadjusted trial balance and go ahead and fill everything exactly like is so that we can make everything into main accounts, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click adjusted trial balance and delete that. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of the unadjusted trial balance. So make sure you click that create a copy. Okay. Oh no, whoops, but right here. Okay, so we have the unadjusted trial balance and then the unadjusted trial balance number two. We're gonna click on this and we're gonna rename it. Okay, to make this one the adjusted trial balance. Oops. And then we're going to make a few changes here too is to make sure that this is the adjusted, not unadjusted. Okay, so now, again, we want to keep our main accounts intact, okay? But the thing is, what we're going to do here is we want to um, add in all the extra sub, the extra sub accounts, right, that we just added in there, so the um, additional um, adjustments, and then... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to keep it summed up in our main accounts so then when we do our financial statements, it's much, much, much more easier and it's, everything's concise. So let's go ahead and get started with our assets over here and go through every single one. So once again, starting with the bank, our checking account has changed. Okay. Our checking account is now thirteen one four two fifty. Okay. okay, we still have our petty cash at uh, five hundred. Cash and register for three fifteen or three ten. Okay, so our account receivable is uh fifteen thirty one ninety five. Okay, however, we have a contra account for seventy six sixty. So what I'm gonna do is, <laughs> excuse me, I'm gonna add that account in here, so the allowance for duffel accounts. Okay. Okay, so this is a contra account, right? The main account is actually going to have um, a combination of the um, the main account subtract out the sub account. But in this case, um, for this, it is a credit for sixty 
or 7660, right? So what you're going to do here is because the main account is going to be a sum of uh, whatever's in the account, right? This formula is going to change to be the, the um, account receivable minus the, um, the contra account. Okay, so now this is what the account receivable is supposed to reflect. Okay. That you don't that you have seventy six dollars and sixty cents less because that is potential bad debt. This is that's money that you're never going to receive. But in this case, that's how I need to reflect that. Use the main account is that it's a sum because again, if it consists of account receivable and the allowance for doubtful accounts, right? You need to subtract it out. Okay. However, when you do expand it, it shows right here that you have the allowance for doubtful accounts for seventy six sixty. Okay. Business supplies. Hold on. Business supplies, right? We adjusted our cups, so. We should have 9217 in my medium cups. In my large cups, I have 21670. In my sugar, I have now $21.60. And oops, and uh, for my creamer, I have one seventy nine sixty three. And there you go. It changes because I have the formula there. It had changed the amount of business supplies that I have now on hand. Your supplies are adjusted, right? It is now eighty dollars. Okay. Inventory. My regular coffee is still at twenty dollars and um, eighty two cents. My supreme coffee is still at one thirty three seventy. But here, we need to add one more part to inventory, which is the ceramic coffee mugs. So I have to add that in there. And this amount is for $386.12. Okay. We need to add it on the on the on the um, second column because now we need to change this formula to include that because it's part of the main it's it's included in the inventory account. Okay, so now we have 540.64. Next is furniture. Okay, furniture, we have uh, to include every accumulated depreciation in here. Since there is four tables here, uh, wait, four items here, you're going to have to go through it one by one, and you're going to have to um, include that because they're all accumulated depreciations, okay?
it would be nice if you could just do a cumulated uh, depreciation for furniture to kind of sum up everything. But then at the end of the day, you need to make sure that your ending balance um, does reflect your what it's supposed to be. But in this case, I'm going to have to um, put in every single account in here. So a cube uh, depreciation table. A cube depreciation counter. A desk. And then So since these are all contra accounts and they're all credit accounts, so in this case, right, my uh, accumulated depreciation for the tables, right, I depreciate it by $78.63, okay? And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put in all those, um, the, all those uh, answers in first. And then I'm gonna do my. I'm gonna re redo my formula. So that's that one. The accumulated depreciation for the counter was fourteen twenty one. The accumulated depreciation for the desk was seven dollars and eighty four cents. And let's see. The uh, accumulated depreciation for the um, the shelves was six dollars and eighty seven cents. Okay. So here I put the accumulated depreciation to here. So how does that affect the overall um, sum of my furniture? So remember. We got to do, we got to do, um, since these are contra accounts, right? The main account is going to be uh, creating a sum. So in this case, right, what you're going to do is, um, I do it this way just because I, I find it a lot more easier than doing equal sum this minus equal sum that. Um, I just take one uh, each account, so the tables first. Um, and I go uh, the table minus the depreciation, add the counter minus the depreciation. Then you're going to add the um, desk, subtract the depreciation, and then you're going to add the shelves, and then you're going to subtract the um, depreciation. So in this case, right, instead of having that $9,000, right, like if we check out our previous one for furniture, right, it was at $9,033.75. Now, with including the accumulated depreciation, the fair market value of these furnitures is $8,926.20. Okay? So what we did here is, we added all the furniture together, right? And then we subtracted out all of the accumulated depreciation. Okay? So we subtracted out all the accumulated depreciations. Okay? To get a total fair market value of your, or book value in this case, for all your furniture is not, is 8900 8, Nine hundred twenty-six dollars and twenty cents. Okay. You that means if we do that to our furniture, you're gonna have to do the same thing to your office equipment and your um, equipment itself. Okay. So we're gonna have to include everything. So um, the next section here is your office equipment. You have to do the accumulated depreciation for the computer, printer, and register.
Okay, so once again, I'm going to complete it exactly the same way, and then I'm going to update my um, account accordingly. Okay, so here, the accumulated appreciation for your computer was $61.16. On the credit side. For our printer, we had twelve dollars and sixty-three cents on the on the credit side as well. Okay. And then we had the register. for $21.65. Okay. So once again, this we we'll, we have $2,863 worth of furniture of uh, office equipment. So I'm going to take my computer, okay? I'm going to subtract my depreciation. I'm going to add my printer, subtract the depreciation, add my register, subtract my depreciation. So that now I'm down to $2,776 worth in my uh, fixed ass, in my um, office supplies, office equipment. Next one is your equipment. Okay. Equipment. We have your coffee brew and coffee grinder. Okay, so let's see our equipment. Is, so the accumulated depreciation for the coffee brewers is $96.20. So accumulated brewer is $96.20. And then the accumulated depreciation for the brewer was... Sixty nine oh nine. Okay, so right now we currently have eight thousand six hundred and fifty dollars worth of um, equipment. So we're going to take our brewer, subtract the um, depreciation, add our grinder. And subtract our depreciation. So now we have $8,485.57 worth of equipment. Okay. That is called the book value. Okay. Because uh, that's what we're doing, right? We're solving for the book values of each um, one and just adding it up. Okay. Vehicles. We have the depreciation on the vehicle. Okay. For a total of two hundred fifty seven sixty seven. Okay. So that means vehicles. Right, we started out with thirty two thousand, right? And because we have to depreciate it, its um, book value is now thirty one nine fifty one twenty three. Okay. We have prepaid still at six six five seventeen. 
Okay. Our deposits is still 1700 and our uh, goodwill is 2100 but we have the uh, we have the accumulated amortization for goodwill so we need to add that in there So this one is for the eleven dollars and sixty seven cents. So therefore, my goodwill, right, is now at fair market book value to be two thousand eighty eight thirty three. Okay. Okay, and that should be it for your assets. Then next is your liabilities. Let's see what your what changed in your liabilities. Your accounts payable has increased. Your accounts payable has increased by sixty six twenty ninety one. Sixty-six twenty ninety-one. Sixty-six twenty ninety-one. Okay. Okay. But your visa should be now at zero because we transferred the entire account balance into my accounts payable. So you can choose to either remove it or just put zero. I just put zero. Okay. Uh, my notes payable is still sixty four nine forty nine. All right, and then now I have payroll liabilities. I need to include two more because I have accrued salaries and wages and accrued commissions. Okay, so. Right here. Insert this. For the salaries and wages payable. And um, commissions payable. Let me change this to black. Okay. So this is going to be included into this, which will change. We'll have to re-update this formula. So for the salaries uh, payable, we got three forty. And then for the commissions payable, you got two seventy one seventy six seventy eight. Right. So now we need our three. We need to add these two um, cells into this formula. So we got the uh, salaries, commissions, the FITW, OICIHI, FICA, FUDA, SUDA, and workers' comp. So it increased from earlier. It was...
payroll liabilities was 179. Now it is a total of 791. So let's see what else is there. Okay. Um, utilities, none yet. Uh, unearned revenue is zero. Sales tax payable. Let's see, is it still the same? Sales tax payable is still twenty forty six eleven. Then we have interest payable, so we have to include that into there now. Okay, so right above loans. Okay. Interest payable, okay? Which is $73.05. Okay? Loans, right? We because we made a, a payment or we recognized the bill. My loan has changed. Right, your truck loan is now twenty eight thousand three seventy two oh nine. Twenty eight three seventy two oh nine. Twenty eight three seventy two oh nine. Okay. And that's it for liabilities. Equity, your uh equity still thirty thousand with the three thousand dollar um $3,000 withdrawal, so that's the same. So now we're going to go to sales. Okay. All right, we're going to double confirm that our sales is the same. So we got $13.94 for our um, regular. We got... Thirteen a uh, fourteen thirty six. We have uh, for this Remit coffee mug seventeen sixty three. Okay, our um, medium regular is still fifty two twenty one. My large regular is still sixty five oh three. My um, medium supreme is still six six five five seven seven. And my large supreme is still at seventy five twenty four. Okay. Then our sales, uh, returns and allowances is still at six at still nineteen, uh, ninety six. Okay. Our discount is still at nineteen hundred. And let's see, our um, delivery income is still at three hundred. And that's it. No interest income. So my entire sales section was untouched. Okay. And then my cost of goods sold. I have a lot to enter in here, right? I have um, cost of goods sold, regular coffee, supreme coffee, and I have now a um, new account that I have to add in here, which is the cost of goods sold for the... Um, Coffee mugs. Okay. And that 
coffee mugs, right? Let's just double check that the other two are okay. So we got uh 1407. Okay. And then we have 1488 for Supreme. So now we need to add our mugs in here. Cost of goods sold, ceramic coffee mugs for a total of 1183.84. Okay, and then we need to change this formula because now we need to include those coffee cups. Okay, so now your cost of goods sold has changed to 40,080.07. Uh, 40, okay, then we have to add a new account for our cost of materials. Okay, so I have to insert another row here for the cost of materials, and then I need to list out every single one. So cost of materials, medium, large, sugar, and creamer. Okay. Cost of material is the main account here. Which is going to consist a total of the medium cups, large sugar and creamer. So starting with the cost of materials for the medium cups, we have 286.70. Okay. We have our large cups was 351.63. Our sugar was $43.20. And our creamer was $359.26. Okay. Giving us a grand total of cost of materials to be $1040.79. Last but not least, we have our expenses. Okay. Starting from the top, advertising expense, right, is still 185. We have bank fees now, so we need to insert some bank fees. My bank fees are two sixty eight thirty. Oops, two six eight thirty. Okay. And then um, our business expenses has increased, right? It's no longer a thousand, it's $1,282.70. Okay. Our freight expense is zero. Okay. Our insurance expense is still 195. 
83, our um, um, interest expense. So we have to include a new account for interest expense. Interest expense was for one oh one thirty four. Okay. Labor expense is still the same, right? You got the uh eighteen ninety for subcontractor and then the two of uh, fifty two for the temporary labor to give you a total twenty one fifth of twenty one forty two. Your um, license and permit so three seventy five. Your loss and disposal so two thousand. Then we have office supplies expense. Okay. So we gotta insert that in there. Office supplies expense. Office supplies expense was for seventy dollars for seventy dollars. Okay. Payroll expense. We changed our salaries and wages to be eight hundred and eighty four dollars. Okay. Our commissions has also increased to four eleven. Ninety six. Okay, our payroll tax liabilities are still ninety seven, ninety eight because we didn't figure those numbers out yet. Okay, purchase expenses zero. Okay, um, my returns and allowances zero because we did the conversion. Entry, so those don't exist anymore. Okay, okay no purchase uh, discounts. Re uh, rent expense is still fifteen hundred, and this is, and then we got travel expenses, utilities expenses, bad debt. Okay, we need to add those in there. Because we have some bad debt. Okay. Bad debt expense for seventy six sixty. Okay. And then we have depreciation expense. Okay. For a grand total of six hundred twenty-five ninety-five, okay. And then we have amortization expense. For a total of eleven dollars and sixty seven cents. Okay. So let's see, did our totals match here? Oh no, I have a discrepancy of twenty eight dollars and twenty nine cents. I think that was from the interest payable. Did I not add the interest payable? I think you put the wrong number. Interest payable. It was or interest payable or expense? It, it was one of both. Okay, interest. Interest expense. I have one oh one thirty four. Interest. 
Interest Expense 101.34. I'm missing $28.29. Okay, so let me let me check interest payable. Interest payable. Okay, it's supposed to be for seventy three oh five. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh huh. One oh one thirty four. Okay, so you're right. So let me see. In uh, interest. Payable, interest payable, 101, what was it, 101.34, thank you, 101.34, and then now we pan out even on all sides, okay, so the main accounts are zero, and my sub accounts are zero, so for the main account, we got ninety nine three eight one ninety seven um, on the left and right, and then for our sub accounts, you have a um, hundred thousand and ninety six 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 nine and nineteen. Okay. Okay. All right. Save, 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 because so now we're done with our adjusted trial balance. Okay. All right. Any questions?